So what I've been using actually is a really good way to um, make Meta and Google work together by doing an L123 inside of uh, Meta and then a direct response inside of Google. About 11 months ago, that's when I posted, I'm like, why well, I'm moving almost all my clients off Pmax. Um, and then it's funny, it's like then like nine months ago, um, that so was like, it's when we showed up Pmax, which is standard shopping. That was nine months. I mean, almost on the same timeline as you were like, hey, this thing's starting to become less valuable. It's the same thing that I saw. Performance Max is extremely powerful, but that what happens is when it grows, it has built-in fallacies that grow with it. So when it's brand new and it's cold and it's always, you know, everyone's, you know, new under the sun, you get that, you know, good new traffic that it's going to be going after. The problem is, is because you can only really acquire new customer, or sorry, a conversion and has really horrible tagging, especially this year. Um, Google's very, very, very poor at, at tagging. It's only about 25 to 30% accurate. But what ends up happening is it's like, okay, I'm just going to get a conversion wherever I can find it. And as your company grows, as your brand grows, as your awareness grows, your audience becomes uh, less cold, more warm, but uh, uh, looking like it's actually a little bit more valuable in terms of ROAS. You know, a person that's been a brand advocate is going to spend a thousand bucks on a two cent click is unlimited ROAS. Um, and they will just keep doing that as much as it possibly can. It's good at finding the people that convert, bad at finding people that don't know about you that would convert. That's, that's, it doesn't, long story short, think about this, it doesn't generate demand, it captures demand. Meta is very good at generating demand, sometimes fairly poor at capturing demand. So I have a model that I've been using. Um, I'm not saying that you have to switch off Pmax. Pmax can be really, really good. But where you'll find uh, a point of diminishing returns is actually part of my speech um, that I was giving this like three weeks ago or whatever it was, I can't remember. I, I give too many speeches, but long story short, this is where I would say is obviously things that most people will will track as CPA and ROAS. This is what I would say is a good way to track uh, your company's business performance metrics because it is influenced by traffic if you're going to hop off Pmax. So standard shopping is going to look complete dog shit inside of the account. It's going to look very, very poor. It will not look anything nearly as good as performance max. That's why I don't even use conversion tracking. As you can see, that's why I kill it sometimes to see how it's going to perform. Found out it's actually kind of cool but I don't take a lot of weight inside of what the in-app metrics say. So measuring this way first gives you your good, like here's my amount of new customers, my cost per acquired first time visitor versus just a cost per visitor. So this will tell you how cold the campaigns are, yada, 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 like measure these things here. If you want to take a screenshot, I can send you these slides. But this is typically what, what companies do is they're underspent on Meta because of ROAS and they're overspent on Google because of ROAS. And they're past the points of diminishing return where you can try to put money into performance max and you just go from basically, you know, here to here, but your, your efficiency line is down here. So what I've been using actually is a really good way to um, make Meta and Google work together by doing an L123 inside of uh, Meta and then a direct response inside of Google. I personally find that unless you're doing YouTube, Google does a very poor job at remarketing. Really, um, it's best to remark when on social channels, just because they're they're thumb scrolling, they're doom scrolling, they're literally killing time, and so you can stop that scroll capture attention. If they're on a website and there's a banner ad in the corner, I find that to be less effective, especially you know in apps and kids games and that kind of crap. So what I usually been using, um, and I'll actually kind of share with you the level one, two, and three that I'm that I'm using for a different agency and a different company and yada yada yada. Um, this one here, what I like to do is. Uh, this is actually a newer company that we just kind of took over, but I like to do an L1, L2, L3 inside of Meta. This allows you to use either performance max at a lesser spend or scale a standard shopping and standard search to the point where it will hit diminishing returns, but is supported by Meta in the meantime. So what this is, is there's three different campaigns here. What the level one is, is all website traffic, all uh sorry all website traffic all meta and instagram page engagers and all existing customers excluded to the point that we can rely on on meta pixel i would get something like edge measure blot out to feed that pixel so that you don't run into the issue that we're running into right now which is only you know 60 percent cold when we exclude everything you can see meta still only 60 percent cold kind of shitty but as cold as we can get it whatever it is what it is but with that awareness, 
this is going to bring the most users to the site. Standard shopping, standard search would do the same thing. It's going to bring one-time click users to the site. Once they click, this campaign shouldn't and will not, once we get edge tag installed, will not actually start to remarket the people that are on the site. That's where level three comes into play. Your typical cold traffic remarketing. Now, there's a level two here that I would recommend is something that's also can help um, can help Meta generate more demand and actually capture more demand at the same time. Level two is people that have not been to the site. So website traffic still excluded and also people that are your purchasers also excluded, but is targeting the people who are engaging in level one ads and engaging in the Meta pages. So haven't been to the site, but watching, liking, commenting, sharing, watching more than 50%, maybe visit a meta page of, of uh, a minor Instagram page. Those are the, you need to keep them engaged. That's the engagement campaign. That will earn the click that then gets your level three to then convert. Now, the reason why we're using this is because I'm running a lot of standard shopping and standard search, just inbound search. I don't think there's something called standard search for search and standard shopping to the site. I'm earning that one click and I'm kind of wiping my hands off it which is going to look like a shit row as, and I don't give a shit. It, it, I don't care what it wrote, what it does. It's the first click in a journey. I'm not trying to get a five X on the first click of a journey of a $150 leather jacket, for example, but my level three conversion, as I start to spend more in meta, I'm uh, sorry, my level three conversion, which is remarketing as I spend more in Google converts those people very well. This supports my Google traffic. If I didn't have meta, my standard shopping and search would not be converting very, very well. I have a seven day time lag inside of standard shopping and standard search because my meta remarketing beats them up at a five and six X frequency. So what I like about this is it allows you to take your Google campaigns, be more direct response, knowing that your engagement and your remarketing in meta will take over and get those people to convert. You flood it with cold traffic, but only to a point where you're actually affecting your media efficiency ratio. Stop there. If you're bringing hundreds and hundreds, hundred more people and they're just becoming less and less and less engaged, your NCAC is going to go up. Your media efficiency ratio is going to down. start pulling back down. But your meta campaigns on the awareness, this level one here, this thing can go, you know, 25, 30, $40,000 a day. I know because I have some campaigns that spend $200,000 a day. Like they can, they can scale for sure. They don't look good, but they can scale. But just know that if you're scaling those cold traffic and you're scaling that direct response inside of Google, having this L3, having that remarketing, that's just all website traffic, keep it funded pretty well. But it will produce, you know, forty three thousand sales for you. Um, this also has existing customers excluded. So I don't like Pmax. I can't scale it. I don't think I've actually really ever made Pmax scale. I made it work. I've never really made it scale. I made Pmax scale when I scaled YouTube and Meta. Then it's like all of a sudden it goes from a two to a six x row as because it's simply just inserting itself in the customer journey. But I've never actually made it scale on its own. So I would say that if you're happy with Pmax, push on Meta outpace Google. Remember those levels? You're right here on Pmax. You're right here on Meta, 60, 30. Maybe don't don't sw switch. Just push Meta. Pmax will still do a really good job at capturing the demand you're generating off of Meta. But my opinion is you're probably flip-flopped a little bit. My next point here uh, was just the basic uh, setup uh, of campaigns, ads, and ad set. So it's kind of similar to, to Google. So we have kind of three level. This is really basic, I know, but I uh, thought I, I sh I'd share it. So uh, we have campaigns. Uh, this is where you, you'll select your, your objectives. 